Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real and I'm coming to y'all from another week here in lockdown in Sydney, Australia because this is a crazy time we're living through right now, you guys. But don't worry, I am staying safe and I hope you all are too. Now, it seems like no better time than to bring you all my top masturbation hacks because when I'm under a little bit of stress and I've got a letter extra spare time on my hands at home, I like to engage in some solo sex and I do not want to even begin talking about solo sex without first acknowledging the role of personal lubrication. Personal lubrication is an absolute must, non-negotiable for me when I'm getting it on with myself because it helps to reduce friction and make everything more comfortable and therefore more likely to be orgasmic. And you guys know if you've been watching my channel for a while, I'm very lucky in this job to have been sent all different kinds of products. I have tried pretty much, I think, every personal lubricant there is to try out there. And I can unequivocally say my all time favorite after trying all that there is to try is Astroglide. Now, the one that I'm really loving right now from the guys at Astroglide is this baby. It's their ultra gentle gel. I love it because it is just that. It's ultra gentle. The formula is hypoallergenic. It is paraben and glycerin free and it's water based. So it feels really similar to just your natural lubrication and a little goes a long way, which means a tube like this is going to last you a long time. So I will pop a link to this baby in the description under the video if you want to check it out when you're done watching and also when you're done watching don't forget to get it on with your good old self because if the world needs more of anything right now it's self-love so go forth <laughs> love on your good old self and hope you enjoy the video if you have not trimmed your nails and if you have especially not made sure that underneath your nails is really clean, then fingering can really hurt. Your fingernails uh, can really scratch you down there because the, the tissue down in around your vulva is so delicate and it's so prone to tearing. So you definitely don't want to be going down there with long, sharp nails. By the way, guys, just to put this out there, I do not finger myself with these fingernails. Like I would never do that. That. I actually use toys when I am touching myself. I can go into detail on that later, but I just want to put it out there. If you have nails like this, you should not be fingering yourself because they are too long and sharp and you can really hurt yourself. So you want to make sure that you are trimming back your nails and that you are cleaning underneath them with a nail brush and lots of soap. Really make sure that you've actually filed your nails down so there's no like sharp little bits on the edge. Sometimes even if you cut your nails back, but you haven't filed them back, then they they won't be smooth they'll be quite rough and sometimes what can happen is you can end up with a tiny little cut down there and it can bleed and then when you see the blood you totally freak out and think that you've broken your vagina you most likely haven't broken your vagina you most likely have just cut yourself with your nail and when you do cut yourself down there sometimes it can bleed a lot because there's like a lot of blood flow in that area so make sure that you have trimmed and filed back your nails and cleaned underneath them because any bacteria or grime or dirt that is trapped underneath your fingernails can get transferred into your genitals and that can give you an infection and that stuff can really hurt that can burn like crazy and if that does happen you really need to go and see the doctor so prevent that from happening by taking this step before you even put your hands anywhere near your vulva. Something that I really wish that I was told when I was growing up and I was first exploring my body was how important lube is and how actually helpful lube can be for women. See, in order for women to experience truly pleasurable sex, and that includes sex that we have on our own with ourselves, we need to be adequately lubricated. And it is true that when we feel turned on or horny or aroused or whatever you want to call it, when we're feeling those feelings, our body naturally does produce some lubrication. That lubrication comes out of our vagina and it gets in that area, it gets in around our vulva, around our lips, the opening, the labia. It provides really good lubrication around there. And that lubrication 
helps to cut down on friction. So whether you are touching yourself with your hands or a partner is touching you with a sex toy or a penis, if it is dry, if your genital area is dry, that friction is going to cause something called micro tearing. And micro tearing is tiny little tears that you can't actually see with the naked eye. They're very, very microscopic, but ultimately what it results in is kind of like a stinging or burning sensation. So if you've ever had that stinging or burning sensation, you might wanna consider if there's enough lubrication down there. Things like feeling stressed, things like the types of medication that we might be taking, our age, all of those factors can actually influence whether or not we are able to get adequately lubricated. So please don't beat yourself up if you're feeling turned on and you're touching yourself and you're finding you're just not wet enough. It happens to the best of us. This is why we need to have lube on hand. Lube is there to create that lubrication for you no matter what your body is doing. And my personal preference is to just use lube anyway. Even if I am naturally very wet, I still like to use lube because the wetter, the better. That is a saying for a reason. The more juicy and wet you are down there, the more smooth everything is going to feel when you're touching yourself and the more it's gonna feel comfortable and pleasurable. And something else I really like about lube is the fact that when you put it on your genitals, it actually usually feels a little bit cool because it's coming out of a tube. And that coolness against your genitals can feel really stimulating and nice and that can actually actually help to get you in the mood as well. So please don't be scared to use lube and don't ever worry that you're using too much lube. We do have a saying in the sex positive community and that is that there is no such thing as too much lube. You cannot overuse lube. So don't worry if you're using tons of it, that's totally fine. Lube is designed to be safe for your genitals. It's not gonna cause you any harm. Now, if you want to enjoy a bit of temperature play, because like I said earlier, a bit of coolness inside the vagina can actually be really stimulating and it can definitely feel pleasurable for a lot of women and even help them to get to climax, then what I would recommend doing is to use a glass or crystal dildo and put it in the fridge or freezer for about 20 minutes. Now, before you put it in the fridge or freezer, what I would recommend doing is sealing it in a Ziploc bag and the reason I recommend doing this is because that Ziploc bag is going to protect your dildo from coming into contact with any potential bacteria that might be in the fridge or freezer. If you just go ahead and put your dildo in the fridge or freezer, just lay it in there, it's going to pick up all sorts of bacteria and then it's not going to be safe to use. So seal it up, make sure it's clean obviously and sterilized and washed with your sex toy cleaner. Seal it up in a Ziploc bag, put it away for 20 minutes in the fridge and then you can use it nice and cool. Now, I do wanna first preface this by saying you should never make orgasm the focus of sex or even the focus of masturbation. Both sex and masturbation are just amazing on their own. They're ways to make your body feel good, to get more confident in your body, to explore your sexuality and your turn-ons, and they don't need to result in an orgasm in order to be quote unquote successful. We have this kind of distorted idea that the whole goal of sex and the the whole goal of masturbation is to have an orgasm and so then if we don't have one we consider it a failure and that is really silly because the reality is women don't orgasm all the time and so if you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to get to orgasm then you might be horribly let down in general if you are following safe good sexual hygiene, then you don't need to worry too much about UTIs. And that means that directly after sex, and that includes masturbation, including and especially masturbation with a vibrator, you need to go and pee. You need to do this in the first five minutes. If you lie there for longer than five minutes, you're giving that bacteria too much time to worm its way up into your bladder and create Havoc. And then the most important part of vibrator use is a regular and proper cleaning. You need to fully sterilize your vibrator after you use it. If you don't do this, you are absolutely going to end up giving yourself a UTI because there's going to be bacteria on the vibrator. And then when you put that vibrator on your genitals, you're going to transfer that bacteria 
directly to your genitals and it's going to make its way into your body. So what you need to do is directly after you finish masturbating, you just want to get up with your vibrator, go to the bathroom, put some hot soapy water all over your vibrator. If it's not fully waterproof, then obviously make sure that you keep the water and the soap away from this one here has like a little socket space here. So I obviously make sure I don't get the water in there, but you want to completely cover this in soap and lots of hot water. Hot water is going to help get rid of any germs or bacteria and then really give it a thorough rinse in your sink, rinse it all off and dry it off with a towel, making sure that you're not getting any lint on it and then store it. Ideally, the way I store my toys is here. I store them in little bags like this and basically those those bags stop you from getting lint on your toys because a lot of women store their sex toys in like their underwear drawer and then little bits of lint get off your underwear and they get on the toy and then you're going to put that toy on your genitals and transfer that potentially into your body. So by keeping it in a little pouch, you're keeping it safe from that. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more videos about vibrators, give this video a thumbs up. And if you are new here or you've been watching this channel for a while but you haven't subscribed yet, obviously hit that subscribe button because I'm here twice a week, Mondays and Fridays. And you want to hit that notification bell as well because then YouTube will let you know when my videos are going live. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Mwah.